आफ्टरनून एंड वेलकम टू सी सी गुरुकुल लेक्चर इन टूडेज लेक्चर इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद द सीरीज ऑन सोशोलॉजिकल थियोरीज वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सोशल एक्शन थियोरी बाय टैलकट पासन सो टैलकट पासन वाज एन अमेरिकन सोशियोलॉजिस्ट हु ट्राइड टू गिव अस एन इंटरमीडिएट पोजीशन बिटवीन द पॉजिटिविस्ट स्कूल एंड द इंटरप्रिटेटिव स्कूल बाय ट्राइंग टू इनकॉर्पोरेट बोथ द ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड सब्जेक्टिव एनालिसिस for parson the focus of sociological theory was to understand not personalities but action deriving from values and norm and this in terms of understanding the structure of social action in his work he was trying to derive from the theory of max weber wilfred pareto and emil durkheim a single theory of social action that considered the action to be voluntary institutional and symbolic so therefore his theory is kind of considered as voluntaristic action theory let us try to understand the theory given by talcott parson so to begin we know that he was trying to develop or synthesize a number of theories into a grand theory so he developed a new synthesis of sociological theory mainly derived from european predecessors which he presented as a general theory of action in his work the structure of social action talcott parson developed a theory of action which corresponds in structure and ma- method to kant's critical philosophy in terms of understanding whether action is based on the ideas or is it based on the behaviors of individual interacting with each other in in society so the core of his theory is the assertion that every action is to be understood as a product of interaction of dynamizing and controlling forces now this interaction between individual is not predetermined or is not fixed so it changes from situation to situation so how an action is influenced would also depend on the institutionalization of values and norm the legitimized values adopted by the individual society kind of affects or molds the behavior of individual so the basic proposition of talcott parson in his theory of action is the construction of a four dimensional action space which can be further differentiated into subsystems possessing varying degree of orderness so we basically we see the influence of the early theory sociologist on his theory so he was trying to postulate a action functional theory which would kind of also be interpretative and symbolic so action according to parson it does not take place in isolation it's not that people individuals in society are aware of how they going to act or what is the uh, response of an individual in a certain situation so it's not taking place in isolation or in vacuum but in terms of a set boundary or in terms of an environment which could be determining the way an individual is going to act out so social action is not empirically discrete but occurs in constellation which constitutes systems constellation means it's collective it is kind of a number of individual behaving in a certain pattern which kind of determines the characteristic of a particular society so the concept of action according to parson is derived from the behavior of human beings as living organism as living organism they interact that is they are oriented to a certain way and with the reality which is both outside and internalized there are certain kind of the interaction between mind and body that kind of leads to a living organism to behave or act out in a particular manner so behavior and action are not similar when we try to understand action theory behavior becomes action 
when four conditions are present. The first, it has to be goal oriented. So, when an action will occur, when there is a goal and the action is oriented to the attainment of the goal or there is an anticipated affair. So, we know that we are kind of uh, acting in a certain manner to meet certain goals. The second condition for behavior to become action is that they has, it has to occur in situations. So, it cannot be kind of in a ap, uh, absolutely a vacuum or an isolation. There has to be a situation in which an action has to be performed. Third, and that is very significant according to action is that action has to be regulated by norms and values of a society. So, a behavior if it is not as per norms and values would get punished or would get uh, kind of not sanctioned by the society and therefore it does not transform into action. Action involves an investment of energy or motivation of effort. So, we are kind of making an concrete effort to ensure that we are motivated to perform that. And why is motivation required? Motivation is required to systematically perform that action in order to attain the goal. So, Parsons voluntaristic theory is an attempt at engaging with problem of social order. So, as we know that he was influenced by Durkheim and other functionalists, he was trying to understand the orderness or how could there be order in society. So, Parsons suggests that just as a discrete individual action is impossible, so it is not kind of happening in an unordered, hapas mannered, but there has to be a kind of equilibrium, there has to be an orderness. For Parson, actions are to be understood in the context of structure and process through which humans are motivated to form meaningful intentions. On the basis of their shared knowledge, they are put into practice within the social system. So, for Parson, action to happen there has to be a certain motivation and there has to be a certain situation in which the behavior is legitimized and accepted and repeated and therefore becomes an ac action which has to be understood by the uh, researcher or the sociologist. So, to understand the voluntarist theory of action, the basic unit of study according to Talcott Parson is the unit act. The, it kind of helps us to understand that the basic unit act, which is a kind of a singular of action, involves three basic elements. Actors are individual persons. So, it is not that uh, it is kind of outside the society or in terms of any kind of uh, uh, place where there is an absence of individual who are interacting. Actors are goal seeking individuals and the most important because it is voluntaristic it, there is a kind of uh, alternative to select or choose between multiple values and norms there is a choice available for the actor in order to achieve their goal. The unit act does not exist in isolation but in the process of interaction of individuals according to norms, values and motivation. So, actors are confronted with a variety of situational conditions including their own biological makeup and hereditary as well as external ecological constraints that influences the selection of goals and means. So, many a time we see that the situation in which an individual is placed is kind of often conflicts between the norms and values that one grows up and then the situation in which one is placed. Now, one needs to know a selection, a selective understanding of which values and norms are important or significant in a particular situation in order to attain the goal. Actors are governed by values and norms. 
such that these ideas influence what is considered a goal and what means are selected to achieve it. Action involves actors making subjective decisions about the means to achieve goal and that is why there is a kind of inclusion of both objective and subjective uh, understanding of social reality. So, there is an objective reality which is the values and norms legitimized by the society yet it is up to the actors to select from those uh, list of values or norms in relation to the specific goal that the individual wants to achieve. So, when we discuss the meaning of social action, Parson describes various types of social action. Now, this the types of social action for Parson is basically based on the types of motivation. So, your action will depend on the motivation which is there behind the particular act. So, he takes motivation or orientation as the basis for distinction among the types of action. According to Parson, there are three forms of motivation or orientation. Orientation in the sense, the push or the factor that makes the individual do the particular act. So, the first type of social action in terms of motivation is the cognitive orientation. Cognitive orientation is kind of any uh, nature of orientation of social action determining the type of action. And this type of action changes with the orientation. So, if it is dominated by rational or cognitive that is the uh, reasoning, the mindfulness of the orientation is dominant and it kind of uh, choice is made by selecting the rational consideration exclusively, then the social action is cognitively oriented. So, in the sense, in a very simple situation, you uh, uh, say an individual born in a particular uh, say backward region would want to kind of leave behind the family and go to say uh, a more developed uh, uh, area or region for job or higher education now gives up the emotional attachment of being together with the family and makes a rational choice to go to a, a distant place for some kind of training and skill requirement that would ra rationally explain the higher uh, wage or income that an individual gets. So, this is an cognitive oriented action. The second type of action is cathartic or emotional. So, unlike the cognitive orientation, the orientation or the motivation for emotional action is predominantly the emotions. So, your values and norms are not determined by your mind, but it is more in terms of the more in terms of emotions in more in terms of your uh, collectivity in types of certain values which makes you more psychologically uh, more protective. So, in an emotional situation, the inspiration for the action comes from within the man. In the cognitive emo, uh, orientation, the motivation is coming from outside. It is coming from the infrastructure in terms of the development, in terms of the possibility of skills and uh, knowledge that can be attained. In emotional orientation, the motivation is coming from within. The third type of uh, uh, social action is evaluative. Now, the system plays a vital role in the society. For uh, person, collectivity is equally important though he is also talking about the individual making choice. So, the system will therefore kind of motivate individual by providing the possibility of evaluating the action of the individual. So, actions are guided by values and they are kind of evaluated. Such an orientation is evaluative. Now, based on the orientation and motivation, Parson talks about systems and 
all sociological theory of Talcott Parson are based on the conception of social action. The overt form of social action is expressed as a role or function. So the role of function presents itself in various ways. And he basically talks about three subsystems which are also based on the role or the function played by these systems. He talks about the personality system which is the role performed by an individual. The second is the cultural system, the role performed in the context of cultural background. And third is the social system where the role is being performed in a certain social context or background. Let us discuss the three systems in detail. So the first is the personality system which Parson views as the aspect of living individual as an actor. So every individual in the society is depicted as an action as an actor who is going to perform certain action. And this individual's behavior has to be understood in terms of the cultural and social content of the learned patterning that makes up his behavioral system. So the personality of behavior an individual depends on multiple factors. And the most important is the learning of values and norms by the individual in the, in the society in which he lives or they interact. So the main function of the personality system involves learning, developing and maintaining through the life cycle an adequate level of motivation so that individual will participate in socially valued and controlled activities. So in order for a person to ensure that the social order or the system is in equilibrium, he lays down emphasis on the learning and socializations of values and norms. Because if individuals don't learn and go against the value system, then it is regarded as deviance or deviating from the values. The personality system is concerned with the social action of individual. The social action of individual can be looked up from two points of view. The first point of view is self regarding that he or she views his action according to the nature of his own self. So the individual becomes predominant. Whatever learning the individual is going to in, 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 in internalize will depend on the self. The second point of the view is the evaluation of the individual action from the viewpoint of others. Now, you, uh, the individual as a member of the society learns certain norms or in, internalize certain values. But if that value is against the collectivity or it causes some harm to the society, then it will be evaluated negatively. That is, it would be supposed, uh, there could be a punishment for that. And therefore, the second part is significant. It kind of provides a check to the learning of norms and values. Each society expects a certain standard of behavior. And this standard of behavior is based on certain values and norms which are considered as legitimate or are evaluated as positive for the maintenance of the social system. Those individuals who conform to the standards of the society are said to be well-organized personality. So how is the individual eva evaluated? The, uh, is the evala evaluated in terms of the personality. And how does the personality develop? It develops on accepting the or conforming to the norms of the society. And those individuals who fail to live up to the standards of the society are considered as disorganized and their behavior is labeled as deviant. So in most society, individuals are expected to be honest and truthful. Therefore, the personality which reflects the honesty or the truthfulness of the individual are more celebrated, rewarded, 
compared to those who are considered as a disorganized so the personality of a uh, kind of a learned ma- uh, 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 saint could be considered as uh, uh, positively evaluated whereas a crime cr- uh, individual who does a crime or is kind of affects the orderness of the society would be considered as disorganized personality the second type of system is the cultural system talcott parson devise, defines the cultural system as the aspect of action organized by the specific characteristics of symbols and the exigencies of forming stable systems of them there are many raf- ramification in such areas such as language and communication however the prototypical cultural systems are those of beliefs and ideas so when we try to understand culture it includes a number of elements here the focus is on beliefs and ideas those beliefs and idea which leads to the constructions of values and norms for a ordered society cultural institution consist of cognitive system expressive symbols and private moral obligations the main function of the cultural system is the legitimation of the society's normative order so there are a number of beliefs and number of ideas but the culture of a society is identified by those beliefs and idea which are supposed to maintain order in society cultural value patterns provide the most direct link between the social and cultural system in legitimizing the normative order of society what is appropriate and what is not is defined by the cultural system when the individual system rises to the level of culture it is known as cultural system so again there is a kind of transition from individual ideas and belief to the collective legitimations of beliefs and values legitimize those that have been evaluated by the society and considered as positive would lead to the formation of a cultural system the third is social system a social system according to parson consist of a plurality of individual actors interacting with each other in a situation which has at least a physical or environment aspect for instance a market where the individual a number of individuals are interacting for purchase or sale of goods and community for the production of goods and community so there is a situation and there is a physical environment and there is the actor so the three um, constituent of a social system are individual actor a situation and third is a physical or environmental aspect in the most elementary sense the unit is the act so the so- unit of the social system is the individual act but for a more macroscopic analysis of social system parson prefers a higher unit than the act which he calls as the status role the social system is a network of such status role relationship so society is made up of individual a number of different types of individual live and interact in a society they have a common culture or may belong to different sets of culture and irrespective of the culture to which they belong or to the type of personality they are interacting with each other according to parson if all individual in society belong to the same culture they form a social system beside the commonness of culture it is necessary for a social system that the social action of various members of a society should be well coordinated and should not so conflict as to destroy the social harmony parson regards the participation of an actor in a patterned interactive relationship as the most significant unit of social system 
So, a social system is consist of a kind of individuals who are related to each other. There is a patterned interaction and the interaction is for the maintenance of an order. So, the component of syst systems are uh, categorized into two analytical constructs. The first is normative order which involves norms and values. Norms are primarily social where values serve as primary connecting link between the social and cultural system. The second type of social system is collectively organized population which involves collectivity. Now, this collectivity is different from uh, say a crowd or a plurality because a, a collectivity has to take place keeping in mind that the individuals are organized and they are kind of have both role and status subject to ordering and control by society. So, the, uh, he also in terms of understanding social systems gives the AGIL model where he defines the fundamental functions every social system should perform. So, the AGIL model A stands for adaptation. Adaptation is to produce and allocate fluidity disposable resources. So, the individual are provided with resources which enables them to adapt to a situation. The second is goal attainment and that is the function is to maximize the capacity of society to attain collective goal. The third is integration and this is to the function of the social system is to ensure that the individual are integrated and they are motivated uh, and through symbolic uh, elements they are connected to each other so or, as to maintain order in society. And the fourth which is latent implies latency of pattern maintenance and tension management. And the function of the social system is to maintain adequate motivation to conform with cultural value. So, by looking at, at the uh, understanding of voluntaristic theory of action, the system, uh, subsystem of personality, culture and social system and the AGIL model provided by Talcott Parson, we have a good idea of the theory and contribution of Talcott Parson. With this, I come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.